Chapter 3, Rain Dragon Rescue. Turmoil at Town Hall. Emergency meeting? Someone hollered. What do you think's going on? Ben asked. Moth Martha Mulberry is at it again, his grandfather said. She calls an emergency meeting about once a week. Ben had met this Mrs. Mulberry. She was the town's busiest busybody and the president of the Welcome Wagon Committee. Though she made it her job to know everything about everyone in Buttonville, she hadn't been able to learn about the mysterious Dr. Wu, and Ben intended on keeping it that way. We'd better go, Grandpa Abe said. Martha takes attendance, and if you don't show up, she comes looking for you. Ben returned Snooze's cage to his bedroom, and then he left. He closed the door tight to keep out that cat. Barnaby lay across the counter, gnawing on the dragon scale. Ben, who wanted to avoid the nasty cat bite, didn't try to take the treasure away. Leave my hamster alone, he said in Barnaby's ear, and the cat growled softly. Grandpa Abe put on his moth-eaten cardigan and his canvas hat, and after grabbing his cane, he and Ben climbed into the old Cadillac and drove to Main Street. Town Hall was the tallest building in Buttonville, thanks to its clock tower. And because a pigeon had built its nest on top of the tower, the clock face was covered in droppings, making it nearly impossible to tell the time. Like most of the other buildings in Buttonville, Town Hall's paint was faded and chipped, and one of its windows was broken. Stray buttons, left over from the factory days, were wedged in the sidewalk and the front cracks. A slow stream of residents climbed the front steps. Ben recognized many of them from the senior center. Most people who lived in Buttonville were even older than Grandpa Abe. They had once worked at the button factory and never moved away, not even after the factory shut for good. It took some time to get all the walkers and wheelchairs through the town hall door. Inside, rows of long benches faced a small stage. Grandpa Abe's cane tapped as he shuffled down the aisle. He slid onto one of the benches, the very first row. Ben frowned. Sitting in the front row at school meant that you would get all called upon by the teacher and asked all sorts of questions. Like, do you wanna read your report out loud? Or did the hamster eat your homework again? Why are you standing there? Ben, uh, Grandpa asked Ben. I'm allergic to the front row, Ben said. He quickly sat behind his grandfather in row two. The hall began to fill. The whole place was a Twitter as people greeted one another and shared the morning's news. Ben didn't hear any mentions of dragon sightings. That was a relief. Hi, someone nudged Ben's arm and a girl with long blonde hair and bright green eyes slid into the bench next to him. The girl was Pearl Petal his new friend and co-apprentice. Her green apron bore the slogan, you get more at the dollar store. What's going on? I don't know, Ben said. I've never been to an emergency meeting. Ugh, we have them all the time. When the food for less market ran out of ice cream right in the middle of a heat wave, people went berserk. And so there was a meeting about that. When your grandfather's cat ate Mr. Meadow's koi fish, there was a meeting about that. Last week, Mr. Filbert forgot to take his memory pills and he didn't come home for dinner. The town went on a flashlight search. We found him cuddling with a raccoon in the park. He thought it was his cat. <laughs> she laughed. Ben looked around. No one was paying attention to him. This would be a good time to tell Pearl about the dragon. Hey, Pearl, last night... Listen up! A voice hollered. Everyone went silent as a woman hurried down the center aisle and climbed onto the stage. Her overalls were as red as a radish and nearly matched the color of her frizzy hair, which was held down by a baseball cap. When she put the megaphone to her lips, her voice blasted out with hurricane voice. Can you hear me? Too loud, too loud, everyone replied. Fingers plugged ears. Too loud, a bunch of hearing aids shrieked in protest. So she set the me megaphone aside and put her hands on her hips. Very well, now let's get down to business. As you all know, I am Martha Mulberry, president of the Welcome Wagon Committee, and this is my lovely daughter, Victoria. She pointed to a girl sitting in the corner of the stage reading a book. Say hello, Victoria. Hello, everyone. Victoria said, not even bothering to look up from her book. 
Her frizzy red hair was pulled into two pigtails set so high on her head they looked like rabbit's ears. She was dressed in the same red overalls as her mother. It has come to my attention that we have an emergency. This morning, as I was peering through my binoculars, checking on my neighbors, I noticed that Mr. Brimfinkel's gar garbage can was missing. Pearl elbowed Ben. A missing garbage can? <sighs> I thought this was going to be something about Dr. Wu. Ben had been worried about the same thing. Um, Pearl? He scooted so close he could smell her peppermint gum. Last night? Attention! Mrs. Mulberry clapped her hands and continued her explanation. After discovering the missing can, I began my morning walk so that I could inspect the neighborhood. That's when I noticed my mailbox was missing. Buttonville citizens, there is a thief in our midst. Grandpa Abe stood and leaned on his cane. My toaster was missing. I can't find my spatula, someone said. I can't find my favorite fork. My watering can is gone. The hall buzzed with voices as everyone began calling out missing items. And all of those items had one thing in common. They were all made of metal. How weird, Ben thought. Mrs. Mulberry clapped her hands for silence and then pointed a suspicious finger in the second row. Pearl Petal, are you the culprit? Everyone turned and looked at Pearl. She did have a bit of a reputation for being a troublemaker. Me? Pearl scrambled onto the bench and stood as tall as she could, towering over most of the gray and white-haired audience. And that's when Ben noticed Pearl's pink shoes. During their last visit to Dr. Wu's hospital, Pearl and Ben had met a leprechaun who was being treated for a head cold. The leprechaun took a liking to Pearl and gave her the shoes. I didn't do it, Pearl said. I already have a toaster and a spatula and plenty of forks. And why would I want a mailbox and a garbage can? That is ridiculous. Her parents, who were sitting in the front row, nodded in agreement. Pearl sat back down with a loud, oh. Well, if it wasn't Pearl, then who? Mrs. Mulberry tapped her toe. It seems odd that we have two new people in Buttonville and suddenly things are disappearing. One of those new people is Ben Silverstein. The other is Dr. Wu. She pointed again. Do you know anything about this, Ben? No, Ben said, swallowing hard. I don't know anything. Zero. Zip. Nana. The back of his neck got all sweaty. Absolutely nothing. That's right, Pearl said. Ben knows absolutely nothing about those things that are disappearing. Mrs. Mulberry cleared her throat. Then there is only one conclusion to be made. Dr. Wu didn't bother coming to our emergency meeting because, and she picked up the megaphone and said, Dr. Wu is a thief and I demand she be arrested. Ben's stomach went into a knot. Pearl grabbed his arm. We have to do something, she said. We can't let them arrest Dr. Wu. What's gonna happen?